I've got a bit of a throwback unboxing segment. Previously, these segments were filmed, and I kind of sort of, in thinking I was getting organized, lost these videos. Hi there, YouTube and makers, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I've got a few tools in to help me out along in my make of the Kozo Hiroka 040 style. Pennsylvania A3 switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale to run on a 3.5 inch gauge track. So let's see what we have here. First thing is, probably guess what it is, and it should sort of be obvious something that's long and flat. I don't think it's too much of a mystery, but let's see nonetheless. Oop, I can see packaging. Gotta be careful not to damage the yeah, item. I'm always really kind of hesitant to order these sorts of things in the mail because I've gotten a couple in the past that were just eaten alive by the post office. But this one seems to have fared well. And as you can guess, it is a ruler or hardened scale. This one is a Mitutoyo. It has got measurements in 30 seconds, 60 fourths, hundredths, and 50ths in inches. And it is 18 inches long. So the, there's nothing on this locomotive that is that big, but there's some things that it would be, I think, potentially helpful to have a little bit longer uh, scale to work with. Um, looks like nice quality Mitutoyo. I'm kind of surprised it's made in USA, but I'll take it. So, super nice and helpful to have. It's not damaged at all, nice and straight. It's always a worry with shipping these guys by the mail. They get crushed and bent and damaged. So that will be useful, especially if you're setting up frames. Um, now, spoiler alert, I do have another project in the works. And again, it's going to be, this one's probably, that one's probably going to be train oriented. And it is a train that's going to actually be in seven and a half inch gauge, which is more typical in the US. Um, and it's going to be electric powered. So. Hopefully, and that one's gonna not be entirely machined, it's gonna be a lot of heavy machining, but it also involves some um, welding. So that's also where I'm really gonna need this 18 incher because it's, I'm thinking that it's gonna be close to four feet long and it's gonna be a ride on. So I'll, I'll be able to ride on it and tow an amount of cargo. So I do need a little bit bigger tooling. But all the components, such as the driving wheels and the axles, this machine should be capable and able to turn them down and to machine them out. So I'm excited for that, especially with the lockdowns coming over. I'll be able to kind of, I'm starting to think about joining a club and getting out and I would need something to be able to ride on. So that will be a, a fun build as well. But getting back to our Kozo switcher and three quarter inch scale is some tooling that I needed. Um, I was doing some practice running some practice parts and I realized that I didn't find several shortcomings in that. I needed some other tools to kind of augment what I have to make things more consistently and reliably. So what I have here is a sandwich baggie. But inside the sandwich baggie is, I believe, this is the three incher. So stare at number, oh, it's brand new, nice and sealed. Oh, it's open at the time. Stare at number 277 3. So, get that off. So dividers, there we go. 
with, apparently this is really hard to find, they get lost easily. So dividers. A little bit of oil, but looking pretty brand new, good shape. So very cool. So three inches. And I needed these in order to do layout pretty quickly actually in the build. And that means there is gonna be a theme here, the stuff. So let's look at this guy. Before I get too too into the weeds. Um, it's the divider is not absolutely necessary at this point, but in terms of consistency, reliability, and accuracy, and doing the layout work, I think it'll make a huge difference. Uh, so, let's see if I can get this out without dumping foam peanuts everywhere. Okay, good, 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 good. So, can you guess where I got this from? <laughs> Spent a lot of money on that place. Oh, pulled out the wrong end. So, these are all, spoiler alert, it's another divider. Let's see. So, it's a little bit bigger one. And I believe these are not stocked anymore. I believe these are the 277-4, so they're, these are supposed to be the 4 inches. So what I want the dividers for is that, so this wheel was individually contoured and done. And it's taken me a lot of time. The thing is though, on the tender alone requires 8 of these guys, okay? And then at the same time, I'm trying to knock out an additional 16 for passenger vehicles. Because one of the things I want to do with this train when it's done is to be able to, to run it, pulling someone and pulling a heavy load. And the last thing I want to do is to build this train and run it, but then I just kind of got to set it up and run it and watch it go away from me and not be able to be operating it and controlling it so I need a passenger vehicle in order to ride behind it to operate it and another passenger vehicle will load it up with sandbags to test how much it can pull and so what that means is that I need 24 of these so I'm basically copying the, the tender wheels and the tender truck and frame frame in order to build the passenger so I need these guys as part of my layout work. So instead of doing them one at a time, I want to be able to set these up to the proper dimensions for all 24, you know. So this one's already been reamed out, but there would be a center and to be able to mark out the larger OD or the larger dimension and then come in with this one. It's already preset, carefully measured out. Carefully dialed in, and then measure the next dimension, or scribe it in the next dim dimension with my blue dicum, which I think I put away. Yes, I put it away. So mark, lay it out, and mark out my blue dicum, and do, and have them all set to this, and just left at this, and just do all 24 over and over again. So that they're all the same, mark the same, and they're all very consistent. And I think it's going to be, as even though this is stylistic and and a, a visual issue on the sides, if there are variations and it's different, I don't think that would really, I don't anticipate that really affecting the performance and operation. So much as the fact that you see twelve of them going by, twelve of them on one side. And then if every single one of the 12, these dimensions are different, it's going to look a little, I think the term is janky. And hopefully that's not a cursed word, a cursed term. It's going to get me uh, busted for cursing. But it's going to look hokey and it's going to look weird. They're all different. And it's going to make it look like a, I don't know what I'm doing and it looks makes it, I think, just look sloppy. So 
hopefully that, that's this is gonna help every single one to make things more consistent but that's what that stuff's for so hopefully they kind of give you an idea and a preview of what's going on and what I and I'm working on and kind of keep you interested and um, give you some ideas of tools that you may need for your own make and also if you have any ideas to kind of help out with that and if you have any other experiences that could help me figure out putting the, these uh, dimensions and patterns in please comment below I'd really love to see what your experience is and, and what your ideas are so that's it for today thank you for joining me and thank you for making it to the end please be sure to uh, hit that like button subscribe uh, there's a little like on down there hit that bell notification to be alerted whenever I post new videos and be sure to comment and share so thank you for joining me again have fun and until next time keep making chips mm -hmm.